So it looks like Gaijin is ready to follow through with the rest of the roadmap, with some of the changes being, uh, well, possible changes to ground vehicle damage models. Now, this is going to be a very important topic, which explains today's double release. Now, I just dropped the SU-25 SM-3 video, and I'll be real with you, I felt very dirty playing that aircraft. At the same time, it was a lot of fun. Call it a guilty pleasure. If you guys want to check that video out, you're more than welcome to do so. I just dropped it a few hours ago from the time of this video's release. And uh, again, double posts aren't usually common with me. It's just that, again, this is a very important subject. I like to get into pure detail. So seeing that I am kind of rushing this out to you guys, there might be some editing mistakes. So bear with me here. But as always, before I go ahead and do get started with this topic, please understand that I will be injecting my own opinions on this. Now, I may have some good takes, I may have some bad takes, but really, I'm going to be speaking from my own experiences, what I would like to see in the game. If you agree with it or disagree, feel free to let me know down in the comment section. Plus, it helps me out with the algorithm just a little bit. Oh, and uh, the links to everything will be down below in the description should you want to go ahead and follow through with everything. Also, there's a survey at the end. I highly, highly recommend you guys click that link, go over to it, and just, just vote, <laughs> I guess, okay? Because Gadget is actually listening to us, which is a good thing. Not even kind of. It is a good thing. So... Let's get more into this. Following the roadmap, possible changes to ground vehicle damage models. I love this image they brought in too. Just, can I keep this as a, a wallpaper, please? Not, not here in my PC. I'm talking like in the background of the game, but uh, moving forward. So basically the, uh, the starting part says, we're talking about everything today. Cool. So let's go down and jump over to uh, the additional effects on vehicles when armor is penetrated. Most of us have experienced situations where penetrating lightly armored IFVs and APCs with large empty areas causes the shell and its fragments not to destroy or disable any crew or modules. This could also happen to tanks that are penetrated by shells with a narrow damage zone as well. I, I think they mean APCR? That, that's just a guess. When this happens, the shell and its fragments pass close to the crew members uh, and modules and sometimes even hits them, but is usually not enough to cause sufficient damage to stop the enemy from being able to fire back, at least for a short time. We understand that this can be very frustrating and so on and so forth. I mean, if you've been playing this game for any amount of time, isn't it a frustrating thing to see your Sabo, your APCR, your APCBC, whatever, go through the vehicle and do absolutely nothing? Well, I'll get into that once we get to that subject. Now, Gaijin is proposing three ways to solve this problem as stated in the post itself. I'll go ahead and read them all in detail. The first one being is, uh, is a way to introduce a more detailed damage model to specific vehicles. There'll be new types of modules ranging from electronic modules for air defense vehicles, machine gun ammunition, electrical equipment, as well as detailing and correcting guidance modules such as the drives. And of course, this is gonna be labor intensive. Each vehicle requires work to be done for it. So this isn't gonna be something that happens overnight, unfortunately. Uh, they're mostly focusing on, as uh, stated right here in the post, separating and detailing the elevation and traverse drives of the M1 and the Leopard 2 series of tanks with the addition of a hydraulic drive supply tank where disabling this part will also disable the guidance drive. What this essentially means is there's gonna be a lot more ways to disable a vehicle. Now, imagine the frustration of shooting out, say, an optic for the uh, 2S25M or maybe even the 2S38, you think, okay, I knocked out his sight. He should be having maybe no thermals. Maybe he should lose his uh, optical lock, etc. But that's not really the case. All it is is an inconvenience by adding an extra 15 or 20 seconds to the repair time, which, you know, can benefit you a little bit. But ultimately, it does nothing to the efficiency of the vehicle, and the vehicle is still combat capable. That's something I want to see changed in its entirety, actually. Give us more stuff to break in case we need to do something to destroy the vehicle. 
And now for the second way, as described by Gaijin, is to introduce new logic for damaging crew members and modules, which will reduce the likelihood of the situations we've described above, as hits will be effective even in these cases. Here's how it'll work. Any hit to a crew member causes a stun effect. When stunned, the camera will shake and sparks will be shown on your screen for a short period of time, about one to two seconds. Dealing damage to the gunner or commander in vehicles with duplicate controls causes a few seconds of concussion. It also causes the camera to shake, a ringing effect in your ears, and a temporary drift with a variable vector, a change in direction, is added to the gun aiming, which you'll need to compensate for manually. In this case, the initial aiming point when armor is penetrated moves away at the moment of receiving damage, taking into account the favor killer mechanics to a random distance and direction within approximately a quarter of the screen. I'm just gonna come out and say it. I don't really agree with these changes. I can see where Gaijin is coming from, right? The stun effect is going to make those one-on-one -on -one battles you have with other vehicles just that much more intense, meaning that the first shot you're going to have to take on your opponent has to be a critical hit. And even then, if it doesn't, that means you have a very, very small chance to react to it appropriately, such as, hey, I stunned a crew member. I'm going to go ahead and use that moment to back off. Maybe I didn't knock out the gunner. Maybe I didn't knock out the commander or anyone for that matter. I just damaged him and stunned him. I'm going to use that to pull back before he retaliates, get back into cover and kind of reassess my next shot. But there's also a bit of personal bias for when it comes to the cleanliness of my screen, meaning that I don't like too many things on the screen happening at once, which will cause player confusion and kind of just snap me out of my zone. I know it's a given, I get it. Real world, you know, if your vehicle gets hit, you're gonna be stunned. You're gonna be like, what the hell is going on? If it's a penetrating hit, you're just, you're likely not gonna be able to hear anything if an APCBC penetrates and doesn't, you know, kill you, I guess. Uh, it's gonna cause a concussive force, which is going to freak you the hell out, which will likely cause you to abandon the vehicle, which was the case during World War II and pretty much any single tank engagement where the crew wasn't killed, uh, they would immediately just abandon the vehicle because they didn't want to stick around for what was coming next. But in War Thunder, Again, I get where Gaijin is coming from, not exactly something I like because all it does is it creates another situation where you cannot retaliate as needed. And now to the third way, as written out by Gaijin, uh, is additional sources of fire in the fighting compartment where damage to internal modules in this area may cause them to start an internal fire. Several things can burn and smolder inside a vehicle, crew clothing, wiring, machine gun ammo, plus rubbish or trash, uh, if you're an American, of course, and oil on the floor. In this case, the fire can go out on its own, unlike an engine or a fuel tank fire, and the damage it causes will be less than the damage caused by an engine or fuel fire. I, you know, I think this is more of a, um, kind of like, I wouldn't even say a quality of life thing. It's more of a, a finer detail, kind of like the grass waving in the wind. If you fire off your cannon, the grass kind of buckles over a little bit. It's kind of like that. It's gonna create, in my opinion, a little bit more of an inconvenience because just imagine that your crew is on red, just, just for whatever reason, the vehicle, brings them down to 0.1 HP, and then that little fire caused by their jacket being singed is going to be the death of them. But I guess that's where we'll get into the next bit, which is healing of wounded ground crew members. Now, this is one I've been asking for for years, and I'll read it here. Due to numerous requests, yeah, numerous being, you know, kind of a light way to put it, we're also considering the possibility of introducing healing for injured ground crew members. How do crew injuries affect the current gameplay? Uh, when calculating the repair time, active crew members that have been uh, skilled are taken into account. Knocked out crew are, are also considered not skilled. The percentage of the remaining health is linearly... That is a hard word to say for some reason. Converted into a repair time multiplier in the range from 0.5 to 1. The average value is calculated for the entire crew in the vehicle. So basically, they're talking about the current mechanics in the game. If your crew member gets hit, if it's missing, it reduces a multiplier, so on and so forth, which adds on to your crew time or repair time. Uh, they want to go 
with the simplest and easiest to use implementation for healing uh, of wounded ground crew members, the automatic healing of said crew. If the crew does not receive any damage within a given time, their health is restored to a minimum level required to remove most of the penalty for the crew to perform their duties. If any damage is received during the healing process, it stops and the countdown to start the healing process starts from the beginning. I agree with this, but not to uh, the fullest extent as it's written out right here. I think, and this is just how I've been describing it for the last couple of years, being like six plus years, I think, uh, and that is healing crew members on cap points. Same goes for replenishing FPE, but of course they don't want to talk much about that, unfortunately, but I guess it's kind of a given. Imagine if your crew is damaged and you go over to a cap point and it not only heals the crew, but it also replenishes your FPE. Now, wouldn't that be a change of experience? Keeps you in the fight a lot longer. Now, having the crew automatically heal themselves in the middle of battle or if you're camping in the back or something like that, it, it does and it will change up the gameplay I think a little bit negatively because what that will do is that will encourage you to fall back and kind of play defensively or camp a viable strategy but one that is going to cause a lot of frustration with the players who like to run and gun and go kind of like myself but you'd be surprised how often even I uh, get called a camper just for kind of sitting in a corner for about 10 seconds but point being I think again go to the cat point Heal your crew, move on, or give us med kits, but please don't make it a premium. I think just kind of like FPE, right? You have two or three med kits, which will heal your crew over time, would be very ideal, as opposed to just having it heal in the background like a Call of Duty game, which was described in a comment as well. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you the um, the voting and how it currently looks right now. Now please understand, I messed up the first one. I did not mean to press no, I meant to press yes, but it just, it kind of stuck. So it's there, unfortunately. Um, but you can see right here, a lot of people agree with the added changes and the module damage uh, as stated at the very beginning, 83%, which is great. The second one, is almost right down the middle. Do you agree with the proposal to uh, introduce stun and concussion mechanics? More so saying no, but that yes is getting very close. You guys know my opinion on that. Don't let me sway you. If you like it, vote the way you feel. As for the uh, proposal to adding the new fire sources to the fighting compartment, yeah, I absolutely agree with that one. <laughs> so as much as it might be a little bit of an inconvenience, yes. And the final one, the uh, proposal to heal wounded ground crew members, is a solid yes and i am so happy to see you guys vote yes it just yes we've been needing this for so long and kaijin's finally doing it and there it is that's all i've got for you for when it comes to uh this round of changes with the roadmap and i'm curious on your guys's take now i'm being genuine here go down to the comment section let me know exactly what you think do you agree with this do you disagree with it hell maybe even jump over to my discord and at me in the general channel or the war thunder channel yeah my discord is available to everyone should you uh, find yourself to be interested in joining an awesome community oh and uh don't forget my three percent discount i have to add that every single time <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this. It was kind of a last minute thing. I'm not even fully awake yet. Uh, so thank you again. And I will see you not only in the next video or even the streams, but maybe in my SU25 video, which you should definitely go check out. I'll see you next time.